power except it wasn't actually in the show So let's talk Masters of the Universe, the animated show brought to us by Kevin Smith and Netflix. Now, we already did a story on some of the breaking news on the review bombing and things like that, but I figured we'd have an honest conversation here about the story and whether or not this was in fact a show that was good. Let's take out, let's try to extricate some pieces here. You know, if we take out everything that we've heard, is there a good show inside of Masters of the Universe for five episodes? Is it something worth watching? Uh, well, let's go. Let's first cover a little bit of the history as to what's going on, and, and then I'll give my opinion. So if we go to Google, I, I think this is kind of funny. We're here at Forbes, and um, that's how big this has gotten. <laughs> <laughs> of Netflix Masters of the Universe accused of He-Man bait and switch. I will say maybe it's not false advertising if you don't... It used to be He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and they just call the show Masters of the Universe. So maybe we should have expected that He-Man wouldn't be in this. I think the bigger problem is the marketing. The initial teaser trailer that we got had, you know, all He-Man action from the first episode and... You know, that song, we need a hero. Dun, 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 dun. So it got people really excited about it. And, you know, we're thinking, oh, this might be a He-Man show. You know, if, if you were a kid in the 80s and you grew up with the action figures, you know, I mean, the show is, a, you know, Mattel pays for this because they want to sell toys, right? They, they offset some of the cost of this. So as the Forbes article goes, it's kind of interesting, you know, that it's <laughs> they're like, oh, yet another week, yet another pop culture war. And um, I, I don't think people really know what's going on. And Review Bombed is kind of a bad, you know, gets a bad name. But I mean, these are genuine fans who genuinely dislike the show. And that's what we're going to try to figure out today is, is the show as bad as, you know, are they mad just because it was tricked or because it's a bad show? So we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, a, lo a, a lot of the fans seem to think that they were tricked, you know, and, and I, f I, I agree with that, you know, Kevin Smith, I mean, the guy's kind of a scumbag at this point. He's really pr shown his true colors that he's just Hollywood, doesn't actually care about the property, never was really a fan. I mean, he should have just admitted, like, I, I'm not a fan of... He man, but I thought this was a fun property. The whole reason, and remember this review will have spoilers. The whole reason why you adapt a show like this, especially think about Transformers or GI Joe or He Man. These shows, you're nostalgia baiting. You're trying to get older people who grew up with this to watch that a built-in fan base that's why the comic book movies are so successful because so many people read comic books if you get the hardcores on your side the hardcore fans are going to blast it all over the internet they're going to scream and jump and shout about how much they love this stuff and when you betray them they are going to come after you so when they feel betrayed there's you're going to expect them to voice their opinion you know, it's at 28% on Rotten Tomatoes and it's been locked for user scores. No more user scores can be added. At the point when we did our initial video, it actually dropped, I think, to 25 or 26%, then rose a little bit. And not that Rotten Tomatoes matters, but it, it gives an idea. You know, this is where the Last Jedi stuff comes here. This is where where all that goes. So, and, and the guy says here, he's like, if you've watched part one, you'll see it's overblown. And on some level, I tend to, not that I agree with that, but I agree with the sentiment that like when they say it's about He-Man, like there is a solid story in here. Now how it's executed, I'm going to have issue with it. So in the first episode, we have, you know, and, and this is kind of amusing. And this is Twitter, which I, I'm not really a Twitter person, but I think it's amusing to point this out. And they're showing like, you know, what happened to Tila? She was this royal princess. And then she's kind of cute here. <laughs> and then she turns into whatever that is. 
and you know it's just it's distracting right you're trying to get to know these characters and she's literally a man's body with a female head put on top like it, it's disturbing I, and no one else is drawn like that just tila so it's a little little weird and especially considering you have a history of the character and if you had the figures you know you had these giant he-man dudes with big muscles and then you had a very leaf the very thin Tila and it you know I think I even had the Tila character and it was you know very thin but still athletic you know not like a Barbie with blown out proportions you know not not anything exponential right whatever was a toy so when we look at this I, I go okay what's their agenda right so when you have her, fir the, when her, there's her first appearance, everyone is validating her and telling her how wonderful she is, how great she's done. She's getting a promotion on her job. She's going to be the master of arms of, of the castle, what have you. And everybody's saying how great she is. So instead of showing us that she's fantastic at what she does, they show us. And then you go through the whole first episode and she, uh, he man, you know, like I said, spoilers, ends up getting killed sacrificing himself for Eternia and Skeletor goes with him so now you no longer have a primary villain and you no longer have He-Man so it's a little confusing like what is this a He-Man show like what's going on here the rest of it there's a lot of of Easter eggs but they're all like toy based Easter eggs they had like all the really kind of crazy toys they had the dude with the weird like uh he had like a weird snake type tail uh, they had Moss Man for a whole five seconds. They had the shark car. They, they had a lot of like the vehicles and stuff. So of course there's a lot of nostalgia in there because a lot of people had those toys. They're not essential to the primary plot at all. But what ends up moving forward the plot, and I think this is where they failed, is after He-Man sacrifices himself, they go back to the castle and everything falls apart because they find out that you know only a few people a handful of people knew that prince adam was in fact he-man and there's good reason for that you know you want to protect his identity as few people should know that is possible and that way you can protect his identity he's in this you know in the original he-man prince adam was still a big dude but in in this prince adam's like this little whifty kid right and you have tila gets upset because no one told her that Prince Adam was He-Man. And, and it's funny, I watched a lot of the Clownfish TV stuff and they're the ones who had the original dispute with Kevin Smith. And here you have Tila get, like stomping off being like, I don't wanna talk to any of you again after literally his parents just lost their kid. You know, and she's like, well, you lied to me and whatever and then her dad gets banished and she doesn't want to talk to her dad either she's mad at her dad for lying to her and it's like you just lost your best friend and this is what you're, you're gonna cut off everybody and go live somewhere else uh we also have the problem of a little bit of the queer baiting i, I agree with that criticism it, it's heavily implied that her and andrea have some sort of relationship in fact there's a part where she hugs andrea and she goes where you go I go and you're not allowed to say that unless you're in the movie backdraft and you're trying to save each other from bur a burning build building and you're both going to die. It's the only time that's appropriate. No other time. Don't use that. As the show progresses, it, 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 again, it, there's a decent show in here, but they came at it from the wrong angle. Again, they get to scare glow and essentially they have to find their way through heaven and hell in order to reunify the, the sort of power that He-Man sacrificed in order to save the universe. So they have to reunify the blade and they go to hell and Tila has to fight off her fear, her biggest fear. What do you think her biggest fear is? It's of being too awesome. So awesome that she's in, like, how is that somebody's fear that you are just too amazing that you won't reach your full potential. Does that sound like something that we would say about Rey in The Last Jedi? You know, f continually validated. She's the bestest ever. I mean, y your character's so one-dimensional, it's kind of sad. And here, the original character was not one-dimensional. So you've 
applied modern day politics and modern day agendas into your story. And now you suffer for it. Like I said, there is a good story in here. The animation's beautiful and there's nothing super offensive about it as far as like, oh, I, I wouldn't, I hate this thing. There's some weird themes that don't seem to make sense either. So I'm not going to go just with the normal criticisms, but there's some sort of theme about technology bad, magic good, but they don't really flesh it out because apparently uh, the guy with the Cyclops, I forget his name, many clops, many eyes, whatever. He has some sort of techno cult now and they're turning people into androids or robots or cyborgs or whatever it is. That's a theme, but I don't know why. You haven't really established, like, we don't like technology here because technology is bad, even though they're using laser guns and stuff. So your themes aren't just, well, they're just not well thought out, uh, especially, you know, if there's this undercutting theme of, of Tila being afraid of stepping up. She's not afraid of stepping up. She just got a promotion and she threw it away. And it's not because she was afraid of stepping up. She threw it away because she was mad about them lying to her. So you undercut your own theme with the actions that you've shown in the show, which is just poor writing. So Kevin Smith, Mr. I'm a good writer and I wanted to write and direct and whatever. Like your directing and your writing is poor. These are poor plot decisions that you're making. So we'll see where the show goes. I guess I'll watch the next series of it. I don't know. It... it it's not good it's not bad it's not like awful i understand the fans who feel bait and switch i mean the fans should be really really mad at kevin smith kevin smith's career as far as fandom should be over on some level he's gonna make clerks three some people will watch it i'm not gonna blame anybody for it if you want to watch it but I, I just don't think he's gonna have the same uh, credence. And here he's telling people not to criticize when he built his career off of crapping on George Lucas and the prequels. I mean, that's where he got a lot of his fandom from. So he's a hypocrite. And the show has bad plot points. It is incoherent, not incoherent, but it's inconsistent in its themes and just not well put together. You know, there's a good story in there, just not well executed. So it's not bad, not good, but we'll see how it runs. You know, he has nothing to lose. He keeps putting out videos on YouTube explaining how awesome it is. So I won't watch them. Other people might, but I won't. So that's what you got from your man Z here. Uh, be sure to catch our live full length audio podcast. You can get it on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you want. And um, you can also come join us on our live stream. It's a lot of fun. We promise we have a great Friday night plan for everybody. You come join us at 730 Eastern Standard Times. Come join the fun. We'll be here. And as far as us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You, we're on to the next one. Ah.